I'm Georgina Ferry and I'm Dorothy Hodgkin's biographer. Dorothy Hodgkin won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1964. She's the only British woman ever to have won a Nobel Prize for a science subject. She won it for solving the structures of complicated biological molecules using a technique called X-ray crystallography. And what X-ray crystallography allows you to do is, having made a, a very pure crystal of the substance uh, and fired X-rays through it, uh, you can collect the reflections of the X-rays uh, in such a way that, with very complicated mathematics, you can work out where the atoms are in that molecule. So you know what the molecule is like in terms of its three-dimensional arrangement. And the importance of that is that, just like the components of a jumbo jet or a Rolls-Royce or any other piece of machinery, the shape of the molecules in our bodies determines how they work. And so if you understand these three-dimensional shapes, um, you can design better drugs and, and learn a lot more uh, about how they work. That was in 1964. Back in 1941, if you remember, with, we're, we're at the beginning of uh, World War II, uh, life is very difficult, there is rationing, uh, obviously everyone, there's still a great danger that um, Britain might be invaded, it's not an easy time to be living. Uh, Dorothy was then living in Oxford, uh, her husband was working away from home, uh, as he often did throughout their marriage, but they corresponded nearly every day. And one of the most striking letters um, that I came across when I was writing Dorothy's biography was one that she wrote in November 1941, and I, I've got it here. Um, and she says, I've just come back from visiting Chain, that's Ernst Chain, who had, was one of the people who was working on penicillin, uh, and now it's 10.30pm. She's often writing letters late at night. And she says she's feeling disgustingly cheerful as a result of her visit, uh, essentially because Chains told her that they're working on penicillin uh, and she might be able to try and um, get some x-ray x-ray pictures of this. But penicillin was a new compound, um, it was known to be active against bacteria, uh, so even Fleming in, in, many years earlier had discovered that it could kill bacteria, but people didn't know what its chemical structure was and so Chain, who was a biochemist, was very interested uh, in knowing what that structure was and crystallography was the technique that might allow that to happen. Um, so this is her being very excited about the fact she might, as she says, uh, she says she feels irresistibly drawn to inject myself into the situation, which I think is a lovely phrase. It just shows the kind of excitement that she had um, about her science. But the, the other thing I really love about this letter is that right at the bottom of the second page, she says, Elizabeth in my arms, she weighed nine pounds, four ounces this morning and has gained an average of seven and a half ounces per week in the first eight weeks of her life. So she's got a two-month-old baby. Um, she's by herself, as I say, her husband's away from home. She had a little boy um, of, uh, who was um, about two by that time as well. So she's got two small kids and she's about to embark on the work, work that will ultimately win her the Nobel Prize. Um, I, I, there's a lot in this letter that I just find extremely moving and it, it really brings across her character. At that time, she was the chemistry fellow at Somerville College. In fact, she was the only science fellow at Somerville College. She didn't have a university position, um, but she was allowed to uh, have a laboratory, which actually was in a corner of what's now the University Museum of Natural History. And that was where she had her lab and kept her X-ray equipment. She did do some keep teaching for the chemistry department, but she didn't formally have a university position until 1946. So while she was doing all this work on penicillin, she was a college fellow but didn't have an Oxford University position. So she worked throughout the war on the structure of this molecule. It wasn't until 1945, just as the war was coming to an end, that she had enough information to enable her to make a model, a physical three-dimensional model that showed what this molecule was like, this molecule of penicillin. And she made a little model, as she describes it, of wires and corks and took it across to show it to, to the chemists, to Professor Robert Robinson, who was the Professor of Organic Chemistry, uh, and Edward Abraham. And they, were in, in, they disagreed with each other about what the structure ought to be. Um, and her solution was going to be what would sort out, you know, resolve this question about what the structure was. Uh, and indeed, it turned out not to be the one that pro the, the Professor of Organic Chemistry thought it was. And he was pretty upset about that. It, took, it was a long time before he'd actually believe it. Um, but he was, by looking at the model, which we have a, we have a photo here of a, um, a, a more sophisticated finished model that she subsequently made, um, you could see exactly what the arrangement of, of the atoms was. 
Um, and that was something that turned out to be not, it, it wasn't essential in order to making, to making penicillin as a drug that could be used to treat people, but it was essential subsequently when people started to make lots of different kinds of penicillin. For example, making a penicillin that you could take by mouth rather than having it injected. So understanding this structure was absolutely essential to the later development of, of better antibiotics. Thank you.